In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to add a MailChimp opt-in form to a pop-up on your WordPress site using a free plugin to create the pop-up on your site. It's one of my favorite pop-up plugins, and we're going to use just the free version in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. To get started, we have to go into the dashboard and go to plugins and then add new. We have to install a pop-up plugin. I like to use one called Pop-Up Maker. It has 700,000 active installs, five out of five stars, not even half a star is a straight five out of five and a lot of reviews. It's also compatible with the current version of WordPress, which is all awesome stuff. But even so, you wanna back up your site first if you're installing this on a live site. If you need help with that, there's a link in the description down below to a backup tutorial where I show you how to backup your site and restore it if you run into problems. Problems like that are pretty rare these days, but if you run into problems, having a backup will be very good. Click on install now when you're ready, and then activate. Head over to the pop-up maker. Let's go to all pop-ups. Has some examples here. Let's skip the tour. And we're gonna create a new pop-up. Let's click right here. And this is the free version of pop-up maker. It's quite capable. There is also a paid version for various upgrades. We're gonna make an email opt-in pop-up. So let's call this email opt-in. This title that we add here is gonna be shown inside of the pop-up when it pops up and the user will be able to read this title. So I'm gonna call this join our list and receive deep discounts. You definitely wanna have some kind of incentive that people join your list. Gone are the days where people wanna join an email list and receive more emails. People want less emails. In order for you to build a list, you have to provide some kind of incentive, an ongoing incentive preferably, so that people will want to join your list and keep getting those benefits. So make sure you have very clearly stated a benefit or multiple benefits for them joining your list. And right here is gonna be the body of the pop-up. That's where the main content's gonna be. We're gonna add opt-in form code from MailChimp. Gonna head into my MailChimp account. I just have the free account. That's all you need to make this work. If you go to audience, sign up forms, embedded forms, and then click on continue, we have the form code for the form right here. Click on copy code. We can copy this into our form builder, a pop-up builder right here. Just paste it right in there. And I kind of blew through MailChimp. I've got a whole playlist on this channel about MailChimp, including how to create embeddable pop-up forms, how to create forms, how to add forms to websites and all that good stuff. So check out that playlist. It's linked to in the card above if you need help with that. If you don't, just follow the steps I just did to get to this form code. And we're not gonna change it right now. We'll change it in a minute. First, we're gonna see how this pop-up looks, and then we'll come in and change this code a little bit. So triggers, this is what's required for the pop-up to open. I'm gonna add a new trigger. You can have click to open, time delay or auto open, and form submission. I'm gonna have a time delay. Prevent pop-up from showing to a visitor again using a cookie. Check this box if you want that to happen. Also, if you want that to happen, you need to disclose that in your privacy policy so you remain GDPR compliant, so make sure you do that. Stop showing a pop-up once the visitor takes this action. Pop-up close, on pop-up open, on form submission, subscription form successful, subscription form already subscribed, and manual. I'm gonna choose pop-up close. Click on add. This is the time delay for the pop-up because we chose the time delay one. 500 milliseconds is the default. You can have this be, what's this, 10 seconds? Have it be as long as you want. I'm gonna choose the 500 so we see it really quickly. This is the cookie name that's gonna be added. So if you wanna review the cookie data on your end, you can do that by seeing this cookie name. I can show you how to do that in just a minute. And now we have our trigger. For targeting, we have various options about who should see this pop-up. You can choose specific posts, so specific categories, specific tags, specific IDs, specific what have you from this list. And that will show the pop-up just to those specific places. You can disable it on mobile devices, disable it on pat tablet devices. I'm gonna keep it on on all of them. The display, there's various display options in the free version. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. You can even create your own theme. I'm gonna choose the light box theme. You can go and customize this theme as well. I have to save this first. Let's publish this. And then you can go to where we display, appearance, theme. There's a bunch of themes to choose from. 
any one of these you can customize and there's a preview on the left on the right I should say and you can change the previous appearance using all these options that you have here and these tabs they have sub tabs as well so there's lots of options and this is just the free version so there's lots of options to customize this exactly how you need it the paid version obviously offers more options but the free version does quite a bit to get to this themes area center pop-up themes on the left you can even create your own create a new pop-up theme right here and you can customize it exactly how you need it which is pretty sweet let's go back to our pop-ups and email opt-in let's see more of our options for the pop-up specifically you can change the size animation sounds I usually don't do sounds but sounds are an option position and advanced close button gives you close options and advanced disable retargeting and disable accessibility features and if I scroll up and update this again to make sure we have all the latest data and we visit the site let's see how it looks and it looks mm, pretty terrible I'd say but we can fix that so I want to get rid of this is the title we added I want to get rid of this giant subscribe thing I want to get rid of asterisk indicates required get rid of mail made with MailChimp this even has a white background as well which you can't really see because the entire uh, pop-up is white and finding it's gonna be a pain right now so this area right here is a white background so depending which theme you choose you will see that as a white background. I'm just gonna switch the theme to a different one. So I can show you to take out the white background if that's what you wanna do. Put the default back, update, and refresh. We should still get the pop-up, there it is. So you can see there's kind of a grayish background for the pop-up, and this is the white background for MailChimp. So let's go into the code that we copied and delete some things. So right here, we can add styles. If you're familiar with CSS, this is where you can do some CSS magic. You can put it right in here, or you can put it in your style sheet. I recommend you do it right here, unless you're, it depends. If your pop-up is only gonna exist on a handful of pages, then I just put it in here, so it loads when the pop-up loads. Because if you put it in your style sheet, the styles for the pop-up are gonna load all the time, even though you're not using the pop-up all the time. If your pop-up is gonna be site-wide, then putting the code into your style sheet would be a smart idea. I have a tutorial about CSS style sheets, how to find them, how to add things to them. It's linked to in the card up above and the description down below. It does not teach you CSS, that tutorial, but it shows you where you can add the CSS. And a lot of CSS is pretty straightforward. You just need to know the right values and attributes. And you can find all that on Google. So it's not a huge deal. I'm actually gonna delete this note. And the background color is defined right here. The hex code, in this case, not a hex, usually you can see like this with three characters, or sorry, six characters. The hex code FFF means white. I'm gonna delete the whole background color thing. Gone. Here's subscribe in an H2. I'm gonna delete that. I know you might be scared coming in here and deleting stuff in HTML, but it's not as bad as you think. You just gotta make sure that you delete all the tags that wrap the code that you wanna delete. So for example, here is the asterisk indicates required. And there's a div, closing div, because there's a slash. And there's an opening div over here with the class indicates required. So I know this whole div is just for asterisk indicates required. And I can delete that. And then at the bottom, we have branding logo, MailChimp email marketing. This is that image at the bottom wrapped in a paragraph tag. I'll delete that. The nice thing is you can't really break a whole lot with HTML if you delete the wrong div tag. It'll look funny. You can come back and troubleshoot the problem and try to fix it. If it gets way out of whack, you can come back into MailChimp and copy this code again and start over. You're really not going to break anything. So don't worry too much because it's just HTML. It's not PHP. Come back out here and refresh. See our changes. And that's looking a bit better already. It's a little wide. We can come back down to here. Go to display and then size. And let's make it auto to see if that auto adjusts to be the right size. That's pretty good. It adjusted to the size of the title. Make a shorter title if you want it to adjust better or make these larger. Um, there's lots of ways you can go. You do have to know some CSS to make adjustments like that, like I think a first name and email address larger and things like that. There are also some settings inside of MailChimp. If I go back to here, we can mess around with the form fields, which form fields we want mess around with the title you can delete that from here if you want 
Uh, that's it for the appearance. But you can change things here a little bit. And then over here, you gotta use CSS to change them. So it's not ideal if you don't know CSS, but this is one of the cheapest ways you can do it because it's free, which is awesome. Now you can't even have point and click for, for um, changing the styling on a form that you embed with HTML. You have to know the CSS to make those changes. There's a lot of options for changing the background colors and button sizes and all that kind of stuff that you can do point and click. But, but when you're embedding code, you don't really have the flexibility. But at least we are connecting with our MailChimp account. That's a plus. And so that's really all the options. Now it's just down to what do you want to have in your pop-up and you coming in and setting it up and making that happen. I wanted to show you the cookie as well. So if I close this, if I right click anywhere and go to inspect and then go to application, this is in Google Chrome, Firefox will have something similar. And if I go to cookies, just open that, click on this one here, we have a filter. If you have lots of cookies, you can search through all the cookies that are on on the your browser currently or from this site. And the cookie we're looking for is PUM-79, which if we go back to our pop-up builder, we have PUM-79 is the cookie name. And that's the cookie that is being placed on people's computers or their browsers when they close your pop-up. When cookies are placed is gonna depend on the settings you add here. So if we click on add cookie, it can be placed on closing a pop-up, opening a pop-up, form submission, subscription form successful, subscription form already subscribed and manually. And this cookie will last for one month. After one month, it'll be auto deleted. And we can change that cookie duration right here. You could have that be one day if you want, but I wouldn't recommend that. You can also use session cookies. Session cookies aren't stored in the browser. They're stored in the PHP session on your server. So that might help you be more GDPR compliant. It really depends on what your needs are. I find cookies are just fine as long as you disclose them in your privacy policy. And this cookie, all it has for data is true. And I believe we can delete this cookie. Let's delete that. And now if we refresh, the pop-up should happen again. There it is. If I close it and go to cookies again, search for it. There it is. For some reason, it's not showing up in this list that it was showing up in before. But anyway. There's PUM79. Sometimes you have to search for cookies, even if it's a short list. And we can easily delete them. If you're testing things, you can come in here and delete the cookies and keep on testing. So that is super handy. And this video is part of the WordPress skills playlist on my channel. That playlist is all about getting up to speed with WordPress if you're new to WordPress. There's a link to that playlist right up here in that card. Click there to watch the whole playlist or click down here to watch a video that shows you how to create jump links and add them to your menu systems. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.